The espresso martini was all the rage of 2021 and the bane of most bartenders' existence. But this cocktail is popular for a reason. Its silky mouthfeel delivering a slightly bitter espresso taste coupled with vodka to temper the effects of the caffeine and topped with a delicious foam that beautifully contrasts the dark rich color of the drink. It's simply stunning to look at. It's perhaps the darkest in color of all the cocktails. So I just had to think, could I make this clear and colorless and still retain those same tasting notes? And even more, what if you could enhance that mouthfeel and give it even more viscosity? And why make it clear? Well, because I love a good challenge and honestly, because it looks really cool. It can be really surprising to the person drinking it. To find something that looks like a standard martini but has the same richness and depth of flavor as the espresso martini is really something interesting. In this video, I'm going to show you how to make the original espresso martini and how I made my clear and colorless espresso martini, which needed clarified and colorless coffee. So be sure to stick around and see how I took this and made it into this. Let's start with the classic espresso martini. First, I'm going to brew a shot of espresso with 17 grams of Blackstrap Espresso from Irving Farms. I'm brewing it in my Breville Bambino Plus. I know I've raved about this machine before on the channel, but I can't stop gushing about it. It was our big purchase last year, and it's been worth every penny. And no, this is not sponsored, but Breville, if you're out there listening, I'm interested. If you're unable to brew your own espresso, you can use a cold brew concentrate as well. I would still recommend using an espresso shot if you can. There's some debate on whether you should use the espresso immediately or let it completely cool off. I've made it both ways, and I really don't have a preference. The drink can stand the extra dilution since the espresso martini is quite sweet and it has a lot of strong flavors. Once brewed, I let it cool for a little bit while I add the other ingredients to my shaker tin. This espresso martini will have Kahlua, vodka, and espresso. I don't add simple syrup since Kahlua is already really sweet. If you're using something like Mr. Black, you might wanna add a little simple syrup. To my shaker tin, I'm adding two ounces of vodka, one ounce of Kahlua, and a double shot of espresso. If you're not using espresso, you can substitute one ounce of cold brew concentrate. Add the ice and give it a good shake for 15 to 20 seconds. Then strain into the biggest martini glass you can find. I love how this pours and even more how it settles. The color contrast is so pleasing to look at. And for the final look, we're going to add the standard three espresso beans. And there you have it, the classic espresso martini. Easy on the eyes, easy on the palate. It's no wonder it's grown in popularity. And now for the clear version. This will also only use three ingredients. Simple syrup, a coffee infused rum, which we're going to make in just a moment, and our clarified and colorless coffee. I'm going to make a coffee infused rum first. The reason I'm making this is because any clarification process strips away a lot of the flavor compounds of whatever it is you're clarifying, some bitter notes or any of the more volatile flavor compounds. So to compensate for this, we'll infuse our rum with some coffee. For this coffee infused rum, I'm going to do a rapid infusion in my ISI whipper. If you don't have an ISI, you can do an infusion by simply soaking coffee beans in rum for 24 hours and then straining. I'm choosing rum over vodka for this because I don't really think vodka lends much to the cocktail. Rum is a far better pairing with coffee. The sweetness of rum really lends itself well to the cocktail. When choosing your espresso beans, you'll want something with a medium roast. I think too dark of a roast can taste a bit ashy and a light roast will impart more of those sour fruity notes. The medium roast offers a nice chocolatey flavor. You also don't want to use the freshest roasted coffee beans either. 
There's a myth that freshly roasted beans taste better, and it's actually not true. After being roasted, the beans need time to degas before the flavor really settles. I recently just learned this from a representative from Irving Farms. The sweet spot is about two weeks after roasting. For this rapid infusion, I'm going to add four ounces of rum to my ISI canister. Then I'm going to add one tablespoon of Irving Farms Blackstrap Espresso Beans. Screw on the top and add a nitrogen cartridge. Then give it a quick shake. Then simply squeeze the handle to let out the pressure. Strain into a container and voila, coffee infused rum that's clear and ready to use. Now for the main question, how am I going to clarify and remove the color from the espresso? Well, it was quite the endeavor. I tried espresso, cold brew, nitro cold brew, agar clarification, milk clarification, activated charcoal clarifications, all of which I plan on posting a longer video about, since it's just too much to include with this one. But for the sake of time of this video and showing my work, Here's a quick recap on how I clarified and removed the color from coffee. First, I ended up clarifying cold brew coffee through a milk clarification process. I gave this a few passes until all of the cloudiness was removed. Then, after much more experimentation, I ended up being able to remove the color using something I never would have thought about using before, a Brita filter. I couldn't believe how well it worked. It took a couple of passes, but sure enough, the coffee ended up running clear and still retained some flavor. Again, this took a whole lot of experimenting to finally get to. It was weeks in the making with a lot of trial and error, and I really can't wait to share it with you guys. I was stunned when it finally worked and very relieved. Please be sure to be on the lookout for the full in-depth exploration on clarifying and removing the color from coffee. It was really eye-opening and I learned a lot and I hope you will too. And now we have our clarified and colorless coffee, and we can make our revamped and clear espresso martini. For this clear espresso martini, I'll add three quarter ounce of simple syrup to my mixing glass, followed by one and a half ounces of the clarified coffee. Lastly, I'll add one and a half ounces of the espresso rum. I'll add the ice and give this a stir for 30 seconds. Then I'll strain into a Nick and Nora glass. And here it is, a crystal clear espresso martini. I couldn't stop looking at it after I poured it. This was a long journey to get here and it was so nice to see it finally pay off. And the taste. It tasted just like an espresso martini, and dare I say, a little more finessed. It's so well balanced with just the right amount of sweetness, a lovely homogenized flavor from the clarified cold brew and coffee-infused rum. And it has such a rich mouthfeel from the whey due to clarification. I really hope you enjoyed seeing these two cocktails come together. And I really hope to see you in the next one for all of the details that went into making this clarified and colorless coffee. Thank you all so much for tuning in. I hope to have the clarified coffee video posted soon, so be on the lookout for that. And also check out my website, theweepearl.com, for all of my cocktail recipes. I'm working on some fun projects that I'll be sharing on there in coming weeks that I won't be making videos for so you'll definitely want to check those out. Thanks for stopping by, and I'll see you all again soon with another video. Cheers!